How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today we're doing our segment of buy, hold and sell for game week 4. If you haven't done so already, make sure to leave a like on the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, greatly helps out the channel as well as turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch as well. Twitter we post our weekly bulletins, what videos are going out, plus my predictions and all that sort of stuff. Also links to the content here on the channel and you also get to see updates for things that we're doing over on twitch which is our game week previews which are going to be on mondays now at 7 p.m edt and then we also have our deadline stream as usual this week one hour before the deadline this week it is 5 a.m edt but this week and this video we're going to be talking about players that we should buy so players that have done well or continuing to do well from previous game weeks we need to bring in players that i think you should hang on to that have blanked that could potentially do well in the next game week and players that i think you should sell that i don't think are worth keeping anymore maybe because they're falling down in price or maybe they have a bad run of fixtures coming up so without further ado let's get into the video so for starters we want to take a look at how we did in for our game week three prediction so overall pretty pretty good you know five out of six were pretty much bang on as it were so we said to buy calvert lewin and patrick bamford both getting a goal in their respective fixtures bamford getting a little bit more for himself in that one with eight points versus calvert lewin six points fernandez i told people to hang on to he will come good and although united were pretty bad and fernandez was pretty awful in the first half he ends up coming out with a goal and an assist which does he necessarily deserve it based on his performance overall? Probably not, but he ends up with a double-digit score and maximum bonus points. Timo Werner, however, didn't work out. He did strike the bar. He did get moved around quite a lot. Chelsea were down 3-0 at a given point, and I think that it was just a bit unlucky for him to potentially not get a return. I mean, it was all the Chelsea graduates in uh, Mason Mount, in Tammy Abraham, and in Callum hudson Adoy, that ended up getting uh, the, you know, the the rewards for it as it were and i'm kind of interested to see kind of how chelsea joe when you know the new guys come in so the likes of zx in there havertz is in his proper role pull a six back from injury they got chill well fit and ready to go they have reese james already in there and they have tiago silva leading with their new goalkeeper and mendy and it's going to be interesting to see kind of how they work together as a whole for now i think it's not going to be worth it and we just have to kind of see who's going to be the main asset there. And I think eventually we'll be going to double Chelsea attack, which is something that we'll see potentially if they, you know, fire like I think that they're going to in the future. As for the cells this week, pretty bang on. Aubameyang, only two points in the fixture versus Liverpool in game week three. And St. Maximin was out injured and could be out injured this week as well. So it was good to sell both of those. So a pretty good week overall for our buy, hold and sells for game week three. Now, let's see who we have chosen for game week four. So the first player we have on our list is Richarlison. Now, I know he's flagged currently and he could be a bit touch and go, but if he is fit, I think he's definitely going to be quite good going into this game week. He has Brighton at home, which is a very favorable fixture for Everton as Brighton like to play out from the back. And Richarlison is very good at picking up the ball, running in behind and, you know, getting in behind teams that actually like to play football, which is very good for him. He's also a very good aerial threat and he seems to be on penalties as well. Now, one thing to note is that Richarlison, that was his first goal of the season he's had a lot of chances he squandered them could have potentially scored at least a hat trick in game week one and he ended up getting three assists in the time being however i think that if he does maintain those penalties he could be very good going forward he did get eight points in game week three with that penalty getting some bonus points for himself averaging 7.3 points this season at only 11 percent owned so a lot of people are going for calvert loan because he's getting more in the box and open play but i think if richarlison just takes a couple more of his chances he could get a similar score and with the way penalties are going this season you know richarlison you know with a little bit extra money might not be uh you know that much uh you know better than than calvert lewin maybe in the long run but i think potentially against teams that are weaker he may you know be a lot more explosive he may get those games where he gets a goal and two assists whereas you know maybe the likes of dominic calvert lewin only gets a goal you know that he can create he can he's very good early just like calvert lewin is but I think that just for a little bit more money with Calvert-Lewin rising and rising and rising, a lot less people own Richarlison, so it could be a great differential. And I think if he is on penalties, that just adds to his value there. And then you can basically kind of weigh up, do I pay an extra like 0.5 more for Richarlison because he's on penalties? In most cases, I would say that's probably yes to seeing how penalties are going this season. But again, 
It is with the caveat that he is flagged this week and with the fact that he hadn't scored. So that may have just been, here, Richarlison, take the ball, you know, get your first goal of the season, and then we'll give it to, you know, James or, or whoever else in the team. But I think Richarlison is definitely a good buy this week. I think an Everton attacker is a must in the next few fixtures. And uh, yeah, Richarlison looks to be good uh, going into game week four. And the next player we have on our list is the Liverpool left back, the Scottish international, Andy Robertson. He's got 20 points, one goal, one assist. He's only 13.9% owned, averaging just shy of seven points per match. He has Aston Villa away next, which is a pretty good fixture on paper. And he scored 10 points in the last game that he played played versus Arsenal getting a goal for himself and a couple of bonus points now the thing that I always question myself is why would I pay seven million for a defender well now defenders aren't really getting clean sheets and there's been a lot of goals this season a lot of clean sheets have been blown away because of just penalties that have resulted in a ridiculous handball or just being given because of VAR and I think that you have to see Robertson in these types of you know I would even start as low as the five million defenders are they going to get some attacking threat going forward if they are see them as midfielders is there anyone that's going to be in the seven million or seven and a half million in case of Trent Alexander Arnold's price bracket they're going to get as much points by the end of the season as those two assuming they stay fit and I think the answer is no I, they've shown that over the last two seasons I've had double Liverpool defense plus Salah apart from game week one for the majority of the season and I think that you know Robertson's you know even looking even better potentially than Trent he's taking some of the corners off Trent as well potentially on some set plays and I think that Robertson's just you know continuing to progress going forward He's going to be, you know, maybe his delivery gets even better in terms of, you know, set plays, you know, even to the likes of words. It's basically like we have to literally choose between Robertson and Trent on how good they are. And I think that, you know, he's getting more into the box, which is something that we're seeing as well. We see like Trent likes to hang back a little bit for those deeper crosses, whereas Robertson, as shown by the goal that he scored versus Arsenal, making up for his mistake that he pretty much gave away to Lacazette for Arsenal's opening goal. And we see that he's getting in the box, whereas Trent's being more of the assister, and he seems to be, you know, marauding forward and, and, you know, getting up there inside the box, getting touches inside the box, which is something we like to see out of a defender who's effectively a midfielder that can get clean sheets. That's kind of how you have to see it with these more expensive defenders. Are they going to get me attacking returns? How often do they fly forward? And are they better uh, at a price point for a defender versus a midfielder in this bracket? And I think the answer is always going to be, in the case of Robertson and Trent, at least, yes. And the first player we have on the hold list here is Raul Jimenez. Everyone's going all mad because he got zero points. He scored an own goal. Wolves look terrible. It's happening to all the teams that have been playing in the European competitions over the summer. The season's been kind of compressed here, so you kind of have to give them time. They will get back into form. You know, Wolves even versus Man City, they still looked quite good, even in the 3-1 defeat. They did look pretty toothless versus West Ham. However, they versus Sheffield United, they looked very, very sharp. So I think it's just a matter of just kind of getting that consistency, regaining that full match fitness that they had during this season in 2019-2020. And I think that Jimenez is a main part of that. He's their talisman. He's their penalty taker, which is quite important. And more importantly, he's got Fulham at home this week. So I think he's definitely a good captaincy choice. I wouldn't be selling him at all. If anything, I'd be bringing him in. And if you do have him, you can expect at least a decent haul out of him in this game week. I think he's going to be involved. Fulham's defense is just as bad as West Brom's, if not worse. The stats show that West Brom's is technically worse on paper. But I think Jimenez can definitely score. You know, Fulham will probably give away a pretty silly penalty, which he'll probably put away because he's quite good at them. And I think that Jimenez is, if you're going to bring in one Wolves player, I think he's the one to do so. And it could be an easy consideration to just downgrade Werner to Jimenez or someone of that sort. Because they have a great run of fixtures. And I think Jimenez, like I said, if he's not in the team, they just kind of function differently. He is their talisman. He's their penalty taker. And I would definitely hang on to Jimenez going into game week four. And the other player that finds himself on the hold list this week is Raheem Sterling. He currently sits at 11.5 million, so he hasn't had a price fall, but he is slightly cheaper than Kevin De Bruyne, only having an assist in the two games that he's played. However, he's very low owned. 6.3% has obviously the same fixture as Kevin De Bruyne, leads away, and he typically does better 
in away games. He's got most of his holes last season from away fixtures, whereas De Bruyne was quite the opposite, more of a home fixtures style of player. If you're on a wild card this week, I would say Double City could potentially be quite valuable for you. Even Phil Foden is another shout, but I think Sterling, a lot of people have been like, oh, well, he started off bad. He's missing chances, all these sorts of things. Sterling will go through these droughts, but the second he scores, which he did in the Carabao Cup in midweek, he's going to fire, and it's going, he's going to fire quite a lot. He just has to play out on the left-hand side. Now, we are going to be doing Pep Roulette tomorrow in the video for Friday, and I think that in that video, I'm going to talk about you know a bunch of different things that obviously make Man City good. The false nine is not one of those things. And if Sterling plays false nine, his output's going to suffer. He's playing out on the left and they play one of the youngsters like Delap or they play, you know, even Phil Foden in there. Or they play Mars. Whoever they play in the false nine role is basically just going to be just like the one that's just going to have to sacrifice themselves for the team. But I think when they play with somebody who's actually got a presence up there, I think Delap played, you know, fine when he came on. That other youngster, I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he wore number 80. He was quite good versus Burnley. In the Carabao Cup in midweek. So we want to see Sterling getting back out on the left hand side. Cutting in. Making those darting runs. And getting in the box. Where he's very good at finishing. Although in the first part of the game versus Burnley. He wasn't all that good. Because he was missing chances that he should be putting away. But then rectified that by scoring a brace. So I think hang on to Sterling for this week. And you should see some returns. Probably in this game week versus Leeds. As they are quite open in defense. The first player to make it on the sell list this week is, you guessed it, Timo Werner. His percentage, own percentage that is, has dropped significantly. He was close to 50% by the time game week one rolled around, and now it's almost been cut in half, down to 28.2%. He's already dropped in price to 9.4 million. He's only got one assist in three games, and you would think he would have prob probably got something versus West Brom, but again, he was shifted around when Lampard brought on all these attackers and got desperate, and he only ended up with two points for all of his troubles after striking the bar in one of his attempts that he had in the game his stats show that he should be scoring or he should be in and around the points however he hasn't got the output yet and I think that's mainly due to the fact that Lampard still doesn't know where he's going to fit him into the team you know in the beginning of this season Abraham has been performing well so you would think just put Werner on the left but when Pulisic comes back when Ziek comes back when Chilwell's fully fit and starting game in game out Reese James has looked quite good are they going to play Werner out on the left or are they play him more centrally to allow him to drift around and have Pulisic being the one driving forward and then cutting in same with Ziek on the opp opposite side I'm just not sure how he's going to play. I think he's definitely a sell for this week. Palace are going to compact themselves into a very low block. Southampton will probably do the same after being punished versus Spurs as we saw when they played against Burnley. And I think that, you know, the fixtures are... not And then Burnley after that for Chelsea, I think they're just not going to fall kindly for someone who likes to get in behind. And with Werner potentially being shifted around because he is considered, you know, one of the better, if not the best player at the club at the moment... I think he's a bit more versatile and would be willing to kind of sacrifice himself a little bit if it means the likes of, you know, the youngsters like Callum hudson Adoy and Abraham and these sorts of players get more of their preferred role. But that could come at the cost of Timo Werner. For 9.4, for somebody who's not going to be assured of that, and we still don't even know who's on penalties for Chelsea with Jorginho being the one taking them. He's probably not going to be in the, a mainstay in the lineup. He's still too expensive of an asset i think with him not getting the returns that we want out of someone that costs that much so i think he's definitely a sell for game week four and the other player we have on our sell list is matt doherty now you could put ben davies eric dyer or any of the bunch in the spurs back line apart from maybe regalon he might provide you know something good going forward but we'll have to see on him but Doherty has been very disappointing only four points no goals no assists in the first three games that they played averaging 1.3 points per match and he's got Man United next who are probably going to score because they're probably going to get a penalty and Bruno Fernandes is going to score it he's already dropped in price he's still 14.8 percent ownership which is quite high but Apart from game week one, I haven't really seen much from Spurs. They just sit back. They kind of let Kane and, and Son, who was in the team before he got injured, do all the work, really. And they just have him just defending a lot. You know, not really getting forward. Very few and far between getting forward in the attack. His delivery is fantastic. It's just a matter of whether he can get forward. And if Mourinho transitions to a back three, maybe we see that. Maybe he goes like a 3-5-2 with a back, uh, you know, three center backs, uh, Doherty and Regulon as the wing backs 
with like you know two workman like players like Winks and Suzuko or Hoiberg and Suzuko in the you know the double pivot with the Celso just in front and then you have Son and Kane playing as like you know a double striker role or in, in when Bale comes in Gareth Bale I think we're gonna have to you know wait and see on that they do have great fixtures after the fact but I don't think you should be spending it on a Spurs defender if anything it should be a Spurs attacker Kane's obviously look fantastic Son when he's fit and available is very good and we still have to yet to see what Gareth Bale and how he's gonna line up is is gonna you know poise himself as is he gonna be the Gareth Bale of old when he was tearing up the Premier League or is he gonna be the Gareth Bale from the latter half of Real Madrid where yes he's had fantastic moments in the likes of the European competition and is a fantastic player on his day but is he going to you know suffer from injury and be lackluster and just kind of not into it we'll have to see I think Spurs he, he, he really likes Spurs as a club when he was when he was at at the club in the Premier League has that changed since he's gone to Real Madrid and come back here on loan I'm not too sure but we'll have to see but in Doherty's case I don't think Spurs defense is worth keeping I think it's definitely a sell for the likes of a Leicester defender like Castagne or Justin if you don't have them or even a Wolves defender in Sice or Semedo in place of Doherty for game week four and that's going to do it for this edition of Buy, Hold, and Sell for Game Week 4. If you haven't done so already, make sure to smash the like button. Hit that subscribe button. It greatly helps out the channel. And turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. And give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch, PilotFlam226, on those platforms. We're going to be doing our deadline stream over on Twitch one hour before the deadline. As per usual, it comes at 5 a.m. EDT this week. So we're going to be doing that over there. We're going to be doing our previews on Mondays now. That's usually at 7 p.m. EDT where we kind of discuss the game week and that sort of stuff. It's going to be one week later because we have the international break and I'm going to do it the week of game week five. So be sure to check out Twitter for the updates as to the exact timing on that and what videos are going to be coming towards you over here on YouTube during the international break and during the game game week leading up to the start of game week five thanks for watching and until the next one take care